Supplication takes prayer to another level. Their supplication is when you come after something you really need, and it's a petition with God. And so there's a demonstration of your prayer. You get down on your knees. Oh, God. Lord, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up. I humble myself. I'm not getting up. Do you do something to my family? There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. And welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. We have been in the midst of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Many of our people who have fasted feel a need to go on. Some will fast 40 days. Some will go on to a partial type fast. Some people fast uh, after the evening meal. Uh, I have fasted primarily just on water and juices. Others go on a soup fast. That's up to you. But God will honor everything that you do when you do it unto the Lord. I have a magazine that talks about fasting. And really, it tells you almost everything you need to know about fasting. I have a number of books. But this is the 21-day fast that I would like to send to you. And you can go to my website. It's there on the screen. And uh, we want to send this. And your gift will help be a blessing, especially to Israel. It's uh, fasting is something that uh, causes your spirit man to stand up. It tells the fleshly man who loves to eat, who loves to be the boss, it tells him to submit himself. And if you'll fast, he will submit. It tells your soulish nature what it wants and what it's learned and how he, he wants to dictate to you what you are able to do, what you're not able to do. This soulish nature, it sets him down. And suddenly, the universe becomes yours. The God of the universe, Jesus the righteous comes and he empowers you where nothing is impossible to you. That, never, that does not happen if you don't fast. There are some financial miracles especially that will never happen to you if you don't fast. The reason that people have breakthroughs, especially when they fast and they have breakthroughs with money, is because suddenly they realize they're not limited to their credit report. They're not limited to what they, their education. People have educational restrictions, but God, God doesn't look what your degree is. God isn't on a budget. God doesn't look at your credit rating. He looks at your faith. And when you fast, this is released to you. And some of the miracles that have happened have been incredible. Incredible healing miracles. Incredible financial breakthroughs. You need to fast. There's no shortcuts in this. You, 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 you don't go on a fast and gain weight. You go on a fast and you humble yourself to God. One time I was on a fast and the Lord spoke to me. He said, you've been fasting to lose weight. You need to fast to humble yourself to me. And I repented. I said, God, I humble myself to you. And you know, I lost weight too. But I did it right by humbling myself to God and listening to God. Now, during this time of fasting, God came to me. The Lord came to me, I had angels come to me. And one of these angels spoke to me about Israel. And at the conclusion of the program, I want you to join me and we're gonna pray for the nation of Israel. So don't go away, you're gonna enjoy this on fasting. Could you stand with me please? Would you lift your Bible to the Lord? If you don't have a Bible, Put your hand up high, but say with me, this is the Word of God. God's plan for my life's in this book. It's a road map. It shows me how to be blessed. It shows me how to go to heaven. It points me to prosperity. It gives me a plan for my future. 
shows me how to treat my wife, how to treat my husband, how to raise my kids. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In Jesus' name. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4. And I want to begin reading in chapter 4, in verse 3. Ezekiel 4, 3. Would you say that, please? Ezekiel 4, 3. Moreover, take upon you an iron pan and set it, set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city and set thy face against it and it shall be besieged and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou upon the left side, lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished that, lie again on your right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore thou shalt set thy face towards the siege of Jerusalem, and thy arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. And you may be seated. The book of Ezekiel is an unusual book. Ezekiel was a, was a son of a preacher. His dad was a priest in the land of Israel, and the Babylonians, they conquered uh, and burned the temple in five, 586 B.C. And then they plundered the land. They killed a lot of people, but then they took the brightest and the best. They took young people because they were the future. They took uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They took them, and uh, God blessed them. The fact is, they were found to be 10 times greater. They got and began to fast and pray, and it was the blessings of God that increased them. The Bible says 10 times greater than all those others. And so King Nebuchadnezzar said, you know, those, those Jewish people, they really do good. Let's get some more. So they got a second group. They brought them into captivity. Then they brought a third group. And Ezekiel went away as that third group. His dad only had about 12 to 14 years. And in that 12 and 14 years, he had planted the word of God in him. And he had memorized the first five books of the Bible, much of the book of Psalms, and and of Isaiah. So now he goes into captivity, and he begins to pray. He begins to intercede, and God began to give him visions. And here in this chapter is a very interesting word that God gave him. God said, I want you to take and go over here and build this dirt and these sand. It's kind of like a sand castle of the city of Jerusalem. Then you take this iron pan and you put it between you and, and that city that is pertained to the wall. And then you lay on your left side for 390 days. And it's a sign to everybody because it'll, I'm going to judge the sins upon Israel for 390 years. One day for every year I'm going to judge them. And then when that's done, turn over on your right side and lay another 40 days, and I'm going to judge Judah for their sins, a total of 430 years. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you think Ezekiel wanted to do that? Oh, I can't wait. This is exciting. <laughs> then he had to become buck naked. Oh, he's laying there. 
Now, he didn't lay there 24 hours a day. He got to get up and fix himself something to eat, and I'm sure he probably did that for a certain amount of hours every day. But he was out there every day. People walk by, what does this mean? The judgment of God's coming on Israel, 390 days. Now, here's what happened. God took and he prophesied through Jeremiah the prophet in Jeremiah 25, that after 70 years, they would be restored back to the land. And so along comes this guy named Cyrus. Cyrus was a king, and, and Isaiah prophesied a fellow would be born by the name of Cyrus 150 years before he was ever born. So God had a plan for him. Now, he became king, and he united the Persians that were just a loose bunch of of tribes and villages. He united them as one great army. And then he took his daughter and he married her off to this guy named Darius, who was the head of the Medes. The Medes about 40 million people. They're the Kurds today. The Holy Spirit fell upon the Medes. They were the third people group in the book of Acts chapter 2 that the Holy Ghost fell upon. So now together they come with a million man army as big, bigger than any army in the history of the world. They come and they tunnel under the walls uh, and they dam up the river of the Tigris River that ran in through the city of Babylon. And then they invaded underneath the city walls where the river had run under. And that's when Belshazzar and that's when Babylon fell. And Daniel was such a powerful man of God. He found favor with Darius and with Cyrus. And so Darius had a son. He and his wife had a son, the, the, the daughter of, uh, of Cyrus, the king. And that son... That son became a powerful, and he's the one who married Esther. So I want you to get this picture of what's happening. And so now they release the Jews. But guess what? Many of the Jews didn't want to go. Here uh, Israel's been destroyed, and here you're living in opulence. You're living in luxury. You're living where there's a lot of money, wealthiest country in the world. You want to go back? You want, to, you, you want to leave here in America and go to some third world country where they don't have running water, where they have outdoor bathrooms? No, you don't want to, and neither did they. And so most of the Jews stayed back, just a remnant, just a small amount. Well, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 18, 22, 25, it tells about if you don't repent to God, then God will take the judgment and he'll multiply it seven times. How much will he multiply it? Seven. And so here is uh, the, 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 the word of the Lord that came to him, 430 years of judgment. You minus 70 off of that and you come up to 360 years. And now you multiply that times seven. Seven. It comes, it comes up to 2,500 and so many years, 520 years, in the lunar calendar. So for the next 2,520 years, according to the Bible calendar, this is based upon the moon, and it's based upon the moon because the moon gives no light of its own. It only reflects what's from the sun. We give no goodness in our own. We're simply a reflection of Jesus Christ. And so they changed that. The Romans changed it to the solar calendar. And if you, the solar calendar is 365 years compared to 360, uh, uh, 365 days to 360 days. So it comes up to 2,484 years. And you add that to the time frame and it comes up to 1948. 
He, what he didn't want to do, by laying on his side and prophesying these 430 days is what put him on the map as a prophet. And so the very year that Israel was restored as a nation on May the 14th, 1948, was exactly what he prophesied in this demonstration. Now, this is not just prayer. This is also supplication. The Bible says, in everything through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now I'm going to pray. Lord, I pray the Lord's Prayer today. Our Father which art in heaven, bless my family. Bless Margaret. Bless, bless my kids, Rachel. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every weakness will leave my body. I pray for Israel. Bless them. Bless uh, everybody in my church, especially those who tithe. Bless them in Jesus' name. And I get through praying. That's not what supplication is. Supplication takes prayer to another level. Their supplication is when you come after something you really need, and it's a petition with God. And so there's a demonstration of your prayer. You get down on your knees. Oh, God. Lord, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up. I humble myself. I'm not getting up. Do you do something to my family? You lay down on your, fella, on, on your stomach. You lay there, and the Bible said, and they sighed and they cried for the abominations of the sins. It's uh, Daniel. Daniel, he said, I entered into prayer and supplication for Israel with ashes and sackcloth and fasting. You lift up your hands, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I surrender to you. Lord, in Jesus' name, take this situation. Take this situation. When he got down there on his left side, there was supplication. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Then he turns on, that's supplication. Supplication is used 390 times in the Bible, uh, excuse me, 60 times in the Bible, and never one time is a prayer of supplication not answered. Now I want you to follow with me over to the ninth chapter. We're talking about this guy, Ezekiel. This preacher kid who was cut off from his daddy when he was 14 years old. But the word of God in him, God began to use it. So in the ninth chapter, he says, And he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Now these men who had charge over the city of Jerusalem, they were not the mayor. They were not the president of the United States. They were not the UN. They were not the European Union. These are angels. These are angels. These are angels of God and one of those angels, it says in the next verse, and he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, go in between the, well, I'm in the wrong chapter here. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north. Every man uh, with his slaughter weapon, they were axes that could cut off the heads of people. And one man among them was clothed with linen with a rider's ink horn on his side, and they went in and stood beside the altar of judgment. Now, the United States has now begun to put pressure on Israel to come out of Gaza. Let's let them alone. You beat them up enough. Now let the, let the Palestinians, let the Hamas alone, let them regroup. They want to regroup so they can come back and do the same thing. The United States does not have the authority, the right to do that. And every time America has interfered with Israel for land and so forth, we've had terrible, terrible weather and destructive storms. This weather we're in right now 
is going to get worse. Just a, a week or so, so ago, it pulverized this winter storm. We're seeing it happen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, but right now I want to invite you to join me as we pray for Israel. And I have a prayer pattern here. It's entitled, Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem Prayer Guide. And you can receive one of these if you go to my website, bobrogersministries.org. And my, my uh, prayer guide will be there. But I invite you right now to stop whatever you're doing and join with me as we pray for Israel. I had this angel come to me. It woke me up at 444 in the morning one day before I came off the fast. And he said to me that this is a spiritual conflict in Israel. That you have prayed, this is what this angel said, you've prayed earnestly for Israel and I have marked those who have prayed. And I will bring great blessing to you because of your faithfulness, but this is not, it's not over. And the Lord told me to begin to pray for the release of the captives. There's 138 uh, possible captives. Some are young people, some are Israeli soldiers, some are older people. Some are young girls, some are older men. We don't know how many of those who have actually dead. But we know that they're being held as a bargaining chip for the cowardly Hamas. We are not against the Palestinian people. There are many peace-loving people. We pray for their blessing. But we are against those who've come to annihilate the people of Israel. So today, I want you to join with me as we pray. Father, you said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They will prosper that love thee. Peace will be in their walls and prosperity in their palaces. So we come today and we come against Hamas. We come against Hezbollah and the enemies of Israel, the Huni rebels. Lord, you said that the enemies that rise against thee shall be smitten before thy face. They shall come against you one way but flee before you seven ways. Lord, Hamas has fled before you seven ways. And Father, I pray for their destruction. I pray for their destruction of the demonic powers of, of Iran who have financed this whole ordeal. Father, we loose the angels of God, angels of legend, angels, Michael and his warrior angels, angels that are as tall as a 10-story building. We loose those angels, Father, to defend and fight for Israel, to go and search out those captives. And Father, I pray protection over those captives. Lord, many are in fear, depression, discouragement, sick. But I pray, God, that you would minister to them. Your angels would minister to them. And you would bring those alive out safely. Bring them out safely. Bring them safely. I pray for the protection of the precious Palestinian people who want peace. Lord, protect them. And Jesus, show yourself to them. Show yourself to the Jewish people. May your protection be with them. Now, Father, you said I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. Father, you see the anti-Semitism, the hatred of Jews, the chant from the river to the sea. You've seen that wicked chant that calls for the annihilation of Israel, the, the, the killing of the Jews, the destruction of your people. We stand against it, oh God. We pull it down. Those who have financed it, may they go broke. May their finances dry up. Those who have been in the forefront, may they never prosper. May they never be blessed. May the politicians that have stood with this, may they be removed in the name of Jesus. We commit this to you for the glory of God. Amen. If you would like to help support Israel, and we're feeding uh, many of the Jewish um, refugees there in the Gaza Strip and the, uh, the uh, villages that they've lived in, the kibbutz that have been destroyed. We're going into each of those. Uh, we have fed over 1,500 families. We buy a food box. We take those food boxes. They last from four to six days for a family of four to five. 
And uh, we try to give a Bible. In some cases, we cannot, a Hebrew Bible. But to do that, it costs $58 for a food basket. For those that can help us, I'm going to, I'm going to send my magazine on fasting, the 21-day fasting magazine, and along with a one-year Bible. This has select ratings where you can read the Bible through in one year. You know, during this time of fasting, 21 days, I had a lady, she testified, she read the whole Bible through during the 21 days, the whole Bible through. She spent several hours a day, she read it all the way through. But that's where the strength comes. And you can go to my website, the information's right there. Give generously, we're, we're blessing Israel and God will bless you for it. Thanks for viewing today and being a part of Word Alive. Are you tired of feeling stuck? Stuck in your walk with God? Stuck with physical pain? Stuck with mental oppression? God wants to equip you to break every barrier holding you down so you can soar to new heights. 2024 is the year of open doors and Bob Rogers Ministries has some amazing resources for you to accomplish all that God has for you. Introducing the 21 Day Fast Magazine, authored by the world's leading teacher on prayer and fasting, Dr. Bob Rogers. This comprehensive guide outlines the power of prayer and fasting through biblical examples and personal testimonies while also giving you practical tips to successfully reach your fasting goal. For your best gift to the ministry, we'll send you this amazing resource. But that's not all. We're also making available the One Year Bible featuring 15-minute daily readings that will take you through the entire Bible in 2024. For your gift of $58 or more, We'll provide both the 21-Day Fast Magazine and the One-Year Bible. This gift not only grants you access to these powerful resources, but also supports our mission to feed Israeli families whose homes have been destroyed in the war. We've been serving for nine years in Israel as missionaries, and this is a strategic time in the history of Israel. This war with Hamas and uh, Gaza has been unprecedented. We thank you for giving because your money has made a difference. We've been able to assist 43 families whose homes have been destroyed or partially destroyed. Thanks to you in part and other givers, your giving has made a difference. And uh, in Genesis 12, three, those who bless Israel will be blessed. Watch out those who have given what God's gonna do in your life. With your generous gift, we'll not only bless the nation of Israel, but you'll also receive two amazing resources that will empower you to have your best year yet. Call 502-962-9650 or visit bobrogersministries.org to unlock the power of prayer and fasting. Make 2024 your year of open doors. And signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the